Hi, welcome to the EEV blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 24. Right, this week I thought I'd um, talk about a component which not many people uh, typically uh, know about or use all that often. It's the uh, chopper amplifier. The um, It's a standard op amp, but it's called a chopper amp or an often called an auto zero um, amp. And basically what these are, uh, they're, they're just, they work just like a standard op amp, um, except they have ridiculously low um, offset voltages, they're like crazy low. Like your standard um, op amp, you know, a standard general purpose op amp might have 10 millivolts offset, 1 millivolt offset, you know, 0.1 millivolts, you know, for a really good one. But, you know, Often that's not uh, good enough for um, very uh, high precision DC um, and low frequency applications. And, uh, and you have to resort to one of these chopper amplifiers or auto zero amplifiers. So they're really cool parts and I'll explain how they work. I've got the um, inside circuitry, the internal circuitry of a typical uh, chopper or auto zero amplifier and this is how it works okay you've got um your standard op amp here it's called we'll we'll actually call it a we'll call it op amp a it's got two op amps in it op amp a and op amp b op amp a is your standard um is the actual standard amplifier used to you know used as a standard op amp now these op amp, you know, a regular op amp has an offset voltage, VOS. Um, and as I said, you know, a typical op amp, that might be a millivolt or something like that, um, you know, which is quite large for precision DC applications. Okay. Now, what we would do is we want to zero that out. We want to null that out. That's what these chopper or auto zero amplifiers do. And the way it does this, it's got um, four internal switches. Okay, these are internal switches. It's got a second op amp, which also has its own offset voltage, same as this one. So it's really quite neat how it's actually going to offset not only this one, but its own. This second amplifier is called the nulling amplifier, and you have to offset this voltage as well. And we'll see how it works. It's really neat. Now, it's also got two internal sampling capacitors as well. Okay, and these are used to store the um, offset voltages for compensation. So let's have a look how it works. Basically there are two phases um, to a chopper amplifier. It, it actually alternates between these two phases, phase A and phase B. Um, and basically they're just different positions of these switches, these four switches here. So let's go phase A we'll call it, okay? Now in phase A, I've already set the switches to what they're like. This one is closed. This one is open, this one's closed, and this one here is open. Now, as you can see, basically what it's doing is um, we are compensating for this offset voltage here on this nulling amplifier. So basically it's uh, this input voltage here, this switch is closed, so it measures its own input voltage between the positive and negative input terminals, and it stores that value on capacitor C1 here it actually stores it on that and then feeds it back and offsets itself so this uh, this amplifier is effectively nulling its own input offset voltage it's it's actually storing that voltage on capacitor c1 okay now this amplifier isn't doing anything at at here at the moment except it's being offset by the voltage which is stored on c2 okay but because we haven't gotten to that phase yet okay there's assume there's nothing on here now okay so this amplifier B has stored the offset voltage on capacitor C1 here and then it goes into phase B and what happens in phase B is that let me rub those out the switches alternate so that one's closed that one's open that's open and that's closed Okay, now what happens is the previously stored offset voltage here is um, actually offsets this amplifier. So this nulling amplifier, effectively we've cancelled out this input offset voltage. It's been cancelled out. Now, 
what that does is now these switches here are changed. Uh, this nulling amplifier is now measuring the input offset voltage on this amplifier because it's fed through. Okay, it's measuring the VOS of the main amplifier and it's storing that output on capacitor C2 here. Okay, and then that value is fed through like this to the, back to the amplifier and it offsets its own VOS voltage. So that's all it does. They're the two phases. So all it does is it alternates between these two phases at a fixed frequency, but I'll talk about that later. It alternates between these two phases at a certain frequency and bingo, it alternates between nulling the offset voltage of these two amplifiers. And that's that's basically how it works. It's not it's not hard or magic at all. It's just basically storing some charges on some capacitors and swapping between them. And the end result is that bingo, this um, your main amplifier here, the offset voltage is completely cancelled out, or you know, effectively cancelled out. It's magic, and that's how these chopper or auto zero amplifiers can get incredibly uh, low offset voltages like you know one microvolt instead of a millivolt 0.1 microvolts you know really incredibly small offset voltages so that's how an auto zero chopper amplifier works um, if you're trying to use a regular op amp at uh, DC they're they're very noisy and um, and and that's a real problem for precision DC applications or you know low frequency applications it's a real issue and Basically, these um, a chopper or auto zero amplifier because it uh, effectively nulls out um, uh, DC offsets and very low frequency signals. One on F, those high noise content ones are effectively cancelled out by um, chopper amplifiers. They basically don't have any one on F noise, and that's really cool. That's a huge advantage. They've, they've got their own disadvantages as well. Um, the main ones are really they don't have a high uh, bandwidth. They only have you know a couple of kilohertz, uh, something like that, because the chop frequency is typically you know 10, 15 kilohertz, um, or you know somewhere around that figure. The other problem with uh, chopper amps is that um, when you overload them, their recovery time can be quite slow. You know it can be you know. 5 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, or something of that order. The other thing you've got to watch out for when you're designing with chopper amps is um, charge injection uh, caused by the switches. Now, um, this can be reduced by uh, lowering the input impedance and your feedback resistors. So you've really got to make them as low as possible to get the maximum performance out of a chopper amp. Now, I actually used a uh, Maxim uh, Max 4239 chip in my um, uh, little adapter I've um, shown you before for measuring uh, current. It's called the microcurrent. And um, I'll actually show you now a uh, plot. This is actually a plot of the uh, total harmonic distortion uh, versus uh, frequency um, for this uh, chip for the Max 4239. Now I actually measured this um, using an audio precision um, analyzer, a really high-end analyzer, and you can see it um, spike at, um, at, at, at several frequencies there. The main one's at about you know, seven and a half kilohertz or something like that. And I'll show you on the um, scope here exactly uh, what that looks like when you get to high THD. And that's about five kilohertz mark. And let's increase the frequency and see what we get. Now if we take it to about seven and a half, where we saw that big spike on the THD um, uh, plot, now look at that, there we go. That is the, that is the high THD caused by the um, pseudo-random um, uh, pseudo sampling frequency of the MAX 4239. Uh, it, it actually uses a pseudo-random technique because um, that um, helps prevent um, intermodulation distortion and things like that. So there you go, that's what it looks like. And you decrease the frequency and there's no problem at all. It's, you know, it's, it's really smooth. So you've got to watch out for that on, um, on uh, you know, um, chopper amplifiers in general. So there you go. That's all about chopper amps.